Hi, my name is Ryan Prasad, Director of IT and Innovation at the International School of Kodachiba. And I'm here to talk about my Coattail final project, Course 5, which pertains to digital citizenship lessons that we um, put into grades 3, 4, 5, and uh, 6, 7, 8 in the middle school. For this video and on my blog and slide deck, I really speak to the work done in grades 3 and grades 5. Um, when I first got to the school a year and a half ago, I noticed that there was some digital citizenship work being done in the elementary school and a little bit in the middle school, um, but we really didn't have a solid plan. And so when I met with the leadership team in elementary, we made the move towards Common Sense Media's lessons because they had just been revamped and uh, they were solid, they were interactive, and they had good connections to the ISTE standards. And so for grades three and five, I had the opportunity to co-teach some of these lessons with those teachers. Um, I didn't push into grade four because I have uh, daughters that are in some of those classes. And um, in the middle school, our head of phys ed is common sense certified. So she took the lead in uh, integrating those lessons into their advisory program. So we had a good place to start. Another reason we started with the grade threes was because that's when we introduced Chromebooks at our school. Um, grades three, four, five use Chromebooks, and then we're a one-to-one -one BYOD from grades six to 12. And we felt that this was a good time to start the digital citizenship program at our school. In thinking about grades three to five, uh, some of the anticipated impacts that we were hoping to achieve was just to have them think about their actions um, around social media and digital citizenship. A lot of them do have cell phones, um, although they can't use them at school. When school ends, we see a lot of them pulling them out um, and are on social media apps, uh, even though they're not the required age to do so. Um, so we were hoping to have conversations around that and of course push those conversations home and hoping that those um, would happen in the household. We also had presentations to parents uh, around digital literacy and hoping those would um, prepare them to have conversations with their kids at home as well. And so we were hoping that this uh, starting this program and then starting with the middle school and of course eventually moving into the high school because Common Sense Media has lessons for those as well would allow us to um, build a really solid program from grades 3 right up to 12 and allow us uh, to, for kids to continually have these conversations in a manner that's really spiraled up because we know just having them as a one-off basis doesn't really help and, and it's a nice thing that they have six lessons per grade level um, and then they'd be hitting that every year so it's it's a nice way to look at things um, so what follows in this video is you're going to see some of the evidence and and hear from some of the the teachers that i had the privilege of working with uh, as we um, launch this project Um, I think that ISTE standards that this lesson met would be 2B because a lot of the students were able to make the connection of kindness, kind of this positive, safe, ethical behavior. A lot of my students made the connection between our class rules and the way they wanted to treat each other in class with the digital citizenship um, kind of pledge what they were brainstorming to write on that poster. So they pretty easily made the connection that they should be kind to each other, using polite language, being respectful. Um, so I could see that coming from the, the classroom into the, the digital world. And the other standard that I think matches with it would be the 2C, demonstrating an understanding of and respect for rights and obligations of using and sharing intellectual property because I think they started to understand that sharing with each other, communicating with each other, you know, they still have freedom there, but those expectations for their behavior are there and who they are online is the same as who they are on person, in person. <laughs> Um, 
So yeah, as far as the standards that this lesson met, um, I would definitely say that it, it would fit with the standard 2A, cultivate and manage their digital identity and reputation and are aware of the permanence of their actions in the digital world. Something that I did as kind of a follow-up to this lesson was I read the book Nerdy Birdie Tweets, and um, it was just a really good way for them to understand that what you post online can, um, you, you can't really uh, control how somebody might react to that, and it could really hurt some friendships. So we talked about also the importance of having real friends that, and not just followers that you don't know. Um, because your real friends are going to be the ones that help you in your time of need. Um, and as far as potential next steps go, um, I mean, we've been thrown into virtual learning right now. So I think now more than ever, the lessons that we worked on in the first semester are um, crucial. And I wish we had more time to, to do even more. But, you know, it's at this point, we have to just um, kind of see how the kids like <laughs> take off with with what with what we gave them um, and like you know see how they kind of manage on their own at this point uh, but I think it would be good to kind of maybe even continue talking about this with the kids in our virtual learning program and talk about how it's affecting them you know now now that we can't see each other face to face This lesson was a very powerful one in terms of looking at cyberbullying. Um, it was a great starting point to look at three different words or phrases, which were joking around with friends, um, being mean with friends, and really how do we define um, bullying and face-to-face -face bullying. And that really led to some powerful discussions in the classroom. And then with the case study, it really allowed us to look at, okay, what does cyberbullying look like? And how is face-to-face -face, uh, cyberbullying the same or different? Um, and I think with these grade fives, really an opportunity to have some eye-opening dialogue around, okay, this actually might be cyberbullying, um, some of these behaviors that I may have undertaken myself or seen before. Uh, and I think uh, a nice next step for this lesson would probably be to revisit, actually, because the 40 minutes um, allocated time wasn't enough. We could see that, that they were um, itching to talk more about this and really to learn more about it and, and how they can be better digital citizens. So whether that's um, creating another case study to look at or maybe even having them create scenarios and share them with each other, uh, but I, I felt like this this lesson itself was really ripe for um, being a springboard into an even deeper dialogue around cyberbullying and what they can do to be good upstanders. <laughs>started looking at their schedules uh, a little bit more closely and thinking about doing those schedules for say seven days straight they realized oh that's not the type of social interaction I necessarily want 
every day, all day. I want to be able to have face-to-face -face conversations with my family. I want to be able to go outside and play with my friends. So they were able to recognize what sitting in front of a screen can do for their well-being, both for their mental and their physical health, um, when they're sitting in front of a screen all day long. So a follow-up lesson that we'd really like to do is um, coming back, looking at that lesson again later on, especially now with you know, what we're doing with COVID-19, where everyone's at home and having to be on screens all day long and Zooming rather than getting those face-to-face -face interactions like we're used to at school. So a follow-up lesson that we'd really like to do would be looking at um, their media time, their screen time, and doing a new schedule uh, of, you know, the best day and then maybe that best day over seven days, if you had to do that day every day for seven days, and to see what it would look like now, um, considering they've got the experience of Zooming and, and being on screen all day long. In terms of next steps, I think that there's more discussion needed around it. I think a lot of fifth graders, especially um, just their age, they have like FOMO, they have a fear of missing out. And so I think they are concerned that if they're not on social media, um, watching what their friends are doing or posting videos on TikTok, or they're not up on the latest game, um, but they'll be missing out and so it could lead to exclusion and so i think just maybe talking about this and bringing it to light and then also making the collaborative use of technology for social good uh, making that the attractive thing so exposing kids to uh, other young people who are using social media for creating positive messages um, and for like joining together and working with others around the globe for some common um, justice issue and some common social justice issue perhaps, and making that maybe the reason why we use social media. So I think those are the next steps, definitely for our population. Thanks. Hi everyone. I just want to leave you with some closing thoughts about this project. Um, you know, one of the questions we're asked to answer is, did we achieve our goal? And unfortunately, I did not. Um, when I set out, you know, the plan was to get through six lessons in grades three, four, and five. Um, unfortunately, as we've moved into virtual learning, like probably all of you have that are watching this video, um, we had to cut the, the project short. And my actual plan was to get some recorded student evidence on video as we moved in the second semester and they were more comfortable with me being in the classroom. But that being said, on the positive, we did get through half. Um, some great relationships were built with uh, teachers and students and trust established. So I, I think as we move into next year, we'll be in a very good place um, to continue. And even if we do have to start in August in a virtual setting, um, we can have a plan going in as to how we'll continue this work. And you heard a few teachers mention that, um, you know, being adaptable to that. Uh, and the ISTE standards, which I commented at the beginning, worked really well. I feel like we're moving towards adopting those at our school. Uh, one of the exciting things that's happened here is we've hired a curriculum coordinator who will be starting in August. And so her and I will be working together to kind of move that initiative forward in the school. So that's very exciting. Um, as for the lessons itself, one of the things I have thought about and, and some of the teachers talked about was just creating some extension activities because the lessons, we found all of them were powerful in their own right, um, but some of them left kids hanging and, and wanting more, which is fantastic. So I think that there's an opportunity for us to do some, you know, some brainstorming, some writing, some even working with the kids and, and opportunities in that regard. Um, and I think sending home conversation starters for parents. I did talk about, you know, making presentations to parents and around digital citizenship, digital literacy, and 
and encouraging them to talk to their kids and giving them some some questions to start the conversation. But I think that um, even for each of the lessons, having one or two questions that we could send home so that they could continue that dialogue with um, the adults in the house would be great. And uh, integration as well. So for example, the lesson uh, in grade five about um, media and finding good media fit perfectly well with with research that was happening with language arts um, common core standards so that was a nice fit and I think looking for more of those powerful connections with the other curriculum really drills this stuff home for the students um, and the last thing I was thinking is you know I mentioned in the beginning how we kind of want to move this into the high school uh, so, you know, start in grade three, then we have the middle school doing this in advisory and then moving it into high school and utilizing that curriculum. And I, I think um, utilizing our tech integration is some more to do some of that work. Um, right now, uh, that individual is half in the classroom, half integration work. And so being able to leverage some of her time uh, to co-teach these lessons, I think would be powerful as well. Um, so that's it. And thanks for watching.